SDSU is going to the national tournament for the fourth straight year. Tomorrow now that gives us a chance to finish this thing off. So we started so long ago to finally get to a place where we'll play on Tuesday for a championship. The best togetherness that we've been able to be in all year. That's why we've been working so hard to have this moment. Let's make it our best moment, okay? Great job, ladies. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. South Dakota State in white, Omaha in the black uniforms. Jamie Broderick, Doug Knight, and Mark Berger are officiating crew, and South Dakota State controls the opening tip, and controlling pace is going to be key for Omaha. A shot right away from Burkhardt is off the rim, and now the Mavericks will come ahead for the first time. And that's one of the things Coach Banks has talked about with Omaha in their first two games. It is about tempo, and it is about pace. But it's also going to be straight up man-to-man -man for most of the game with these teams play. So you're going to see a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities to get to the middle of the floor. Here's Kennedy Grant with it. She absolutely needs to have a big day. She was 2 of 14 from the field yesterday in the semis, and that shot is blocked by Tori Nelson. She has started every game this season, and the junior just gives them so much size and length inside. We've talked about Selland as the player of the year. Keep an eye on Haley Timmer. She has been fantastic during the Summit League tournament. Another empty possession for the Jackrabbits, still looking for our first points. You go back to the quarterfinal game against St. Thomas just the other day, and it was a slow start for South Dakota State, but this is where they make their money with their defense. And it's Paige Meyer turning a turnover into the first points. She missed last year's WNIT run with an ACL, so she is excited to be playing in the postseason for the first time. Well, in this sophomore guard, a second team all summit selection, and they're selling again out front. This is balanced top to bottom in the entire South Dakota State roster. Couple of turnovers. And four points off of those turnovers. But they had very good team defense. Now Stanley taking too many steps there. And Aaliyah Stanley turns it over for the Mavericks. As you look at A.J., Aaron Johnston, the dean of the Summit League, 23rd year as head coach, and coach of the year for the seventh time. And what Aaron Johnson has built at South Dakota State is ultimately what I think all coaches look to for their program no matter what level. You want consistency. You find players that want to be part of your program. And that's what he has done. They have also done a fantastic job of keeping the very best talent in the state of South Dakota and the region right with the Jackrabbit program. And but the biggest factor, I think, if you asked Aaron Johnson and probably any of the young women on this team, Clay, is that they want back in that NCAA tournament. They haven't been there since 2019. Tori Nelson picking up that offensive foul. Cave will skip it over to the wing. Quickly gets it back, but good closeout speed there by Tori Nelson defensively. Cave takes it into the lane, and there's another block for Tori Nelson. And it will be aggressive downhill penetration. And she has whipped this team into shape at the absolute right time of the year. you got to put pressure on this defense, but Cave also has to understand she's going to be at a size disadvantage at 5'7 when you go in amongst the trees. And there's another block by Nelson. Program record 20 straight wins now for the Jackrabbits as Cade gets in for a decent look and gets Omaha's first point. And that's a good sign. They've got to see the ball go through the basket here early. You've got to gain some confidence, but you've got to also feel that this is a bit of a ground out for both of these teams right now to get comfortable. There's Peyton Burkhardt left open and the six foot senior, she's got good range. She's going to be able to step out and shoot the basketball. That balance then brings more scoring for the Jackrabbits. Yeah, it used to be an inside out team. They used the posts to uh, create those three point shots. Don't rely on it quite as much as Polina Nikolachkina, the Juco transfer from Russia. He played at Tallahassee Community College last couple of years, hits a three, and Omaha's right in this game down a couple. And it's always just about patience on the offensive end. For Omaha, you can play fast, but you have to play smart. Burkhardt dumps it into the paint. Spinning around is Nelson. Good touch. Bounces off the rim, but right on down. We've seen teams in this in this tournament on both the women's and the men's side. You've bet, you beat your opponent twice. You cannot get them a third time. South Dakota State so impressive in this very difficult league. Just one conference loss the last three seasons. 
They go inside. Again, they're trying to establish Pila Kuda. Haven't been able to do it. And on the breakout, Haley Timmer scores her first points. I love easy offense from your defense. And that's exactly what South Dakota State gets on that last possession. But you said it. They need to get touches for Pila Kuda inside. They haven't been able to find her double and triple teams and a bit of a front from this Jack Rabbit defense. Wide open. Nikolachkina, her second three, and that's keeping Omaha in this game. It's now 11 to 8. She's done a little bit of everything in this tournament for the Mavericks, but now stepping up and knocking down two big threes, opening the floor, finding shooters. Driving Timmer kisses it off the window. And that's where Haley Timmer left off from yesterday in that outstanding 25 point performance. Also, they've hit their only three point attempt. Uh, another bad pass, broken up. Diving on the floor is Tyson, and that's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to belong to the Jacks when we come back. But that ultimately comes down to what South Dakota State is willing to give up. They will give up some of those threes this afternoon, knowing they could shut down the post game. Jack Rabbits have it up five. Brooklyn Meyer on the block. Spinning here is Drew Gilton. She has been outstanding off the bench here in recent weeks. Contact underneath Brooklyn Meyer is going to get to the line for South Dakota State. It's the thing about Aaron Johnson. Always recruits so well, bringing in Brooklyn Meyer. Freshman getting about 13 minutes per game. The Jacks in the semifinals Missy, had 24 bench points. We saw in the quarterfinal game against St. Thomas how the South Dakota team, they were a little bit rocky, the South Dakota State team to start. But now this is important. They've got to settle in here on both ends of the floor. And they're doing it with their defense. Sometimes the ball doesn't go in the basket on the other end. 18 turnovers in that big win against North Dakota. 17 turnovers yesterday against Kansas City. And don't forget the 38 year on ESPN champ we continuing tonight with the Horizon League title game at 7 Eastern then it's the West Coast Conference Championship game the Zags Stanley had a block blocked by Tyson they want to get to the interior of this Jackrabbit defense even out in transition but here's Stanley just at a mismatch from the get-go it is the length and the physicality of this Jackrabbit defense that gives them such an advantage especially against a team like Omaha Well, she's been doing it with the three-point shot, but Melina Nikolachkina couldn't hit that shot on the drive, and now we get a foul coming back up the floor. That's on Stanley. Ten seconds. Shot clock is off. There's a three, and it's good. Knocking it down. Haley Timmer, who's had a great start to this game. Should not be surprised at all, but the sophomore ready to shoot the basketball. Slow closeout by Omaha, and an opportunity right there for this team to go up 21 to 8 after the first 10 minutes. 21 to 8 after one quarter. Haley Timmer already in double figures for the 24th time this year. She has a couple of threes, sitting on 10 points. Omaha desperately needs to get a little run going of their own to stay in this game. Yeah, they've got to be able to open the floor again, and those types of turnovers, those are going to be the backbreakers here to start this second quarter. And Sellen gets it to go, and the foul. That's the vision by the sophomore, Paige Meyer, out in transition, and she's got a chance at that three-point play. Nikolachkina picking up the foul, her first, and Maya Sellen, so hard to defend. Of course, uh, she's She's experienced as a postseason player. She was a part of that Sweet 16 team in 2019. She, she's at her best this time of year. This the South Dakota State squad is what we say in college basketball these days. This is an old roster, but these are veteran players, and they have had so many games behind them. The more pressure defense by South Dakota State. Now they look to run, but this is where their patience and experience comes into play. If they don't have anything off the catch, they're looking to get in their secondary break, and they line up Meyer for yet another three. Timeout. Omaha. The regular season in this tournament will prepare the winner to go into the field of 68. Eight points for Omaha. They also have eight turnovers. That's the player, Pila Kuda. 
who had a double-double yesterday and a double-double in the quarterfinals who could change things quickly for Omaha. They got to get her touches, and she's got to be able to establish herself deep. When she posts up and wants the basketball, good things will happen. She's got to also move quick because the double team will come as well. Believe it or not, that was her first field goal attempt. And now Nelson answers back with a three. So much good ball movement for this Jackrabbit offense. One thing you see, Clay, they do not stand. There is constant motion and movement. Cuts and screens within the system. That gets them wide open looks. After a scoring drought of over six minutes, Omaha trying to string a couple of possessions together, but they missed from the corner. Here comes South Dakota State again, leading by 19, under seven to go in the first half. They've just controlled things on both ends. And when they haven't had it on the break, they pull it out and get their offense set. This is where the patience comes in. Driving is Selland, and she's going to get back to the foul line. Sixth team foul against the Mavericks. And I know things look gloomy right now for Omaha, but consider they didn't qualify for the tournament last year. And now they're in the finals for the second time in three years. And it's been a, it's been a great weekend. Four blocks for Nelson, all here in the first half. That's a new career high, and we've got a lot of game to play. Yeah, that's that Tyson got a piece of one. Number six to go in the half. There's Nelson again. Timmers in double figures. They work it into Selen. Now driving Nelson. Little adjustment and off the window and down. Such patience with the basketball allows the play to come to her. Seven now for Nelson. Go along with those four blocks. By the way, six blocks for South Dakota State here in the half. And then at eight, the women's field of 68 is revealed. And again, uh, South Dakota State, Missy has a great resume. Right now, Charlie Cream sees the Summit League as a one-bid league. Creighton, UCLA, Washington State holding their own against the number one team in the country. But you can take care of your own business, control your own destiny with the win here this afternoon. Six points, six rebounds off the bench. She has been outstanding as a, a reserve for AJ. The sixth woman of the year in the Summit League, and it's outstanding to think that you can have such an impact player like that who's been a great defender and rebounder, etc. Good cut. Kaitchis. Great adjustment. Katie Kaitchis, the junior from Knoxville, Iowa with her first point. She's been a huge lift in their two wins here at the Summit League Tournament, giving them a little bit of everything, kind of the role player mentality Carrie Banks is looking for in her program. Skip pass for Timmer, her three. Yes! Haley Timmer with her third triple of the game. You've got to be able to get there quicker and find those shooters. South Dakota State is shooting 65% from the field. Haley Timmer, a, a true consistent piece of the puzzle for Aaron Johnston. Ten points plus in every game since January. Here's Timmer again. Gilton. Nice pass for Sellen. Little step by and gets it. And she'll go to the line for an and one opportunity. South Dakota State, five of their last five from the field. And the struggles for Omaha not only on the offensive end continue, but it has been simply great passing and anticipation on the offensive end by South Dakota State. They have gotten way too many easy looks here in this first half. Selling now with eight. Townsend from the wing, Miss Badley. And Omaha is now 5 of 22 from the field. Gilton for Selen. She can hit it from out there, too. And we had some contact as Peyton Burkhard was going for it and ran into a player. Off the floor to go get those loose balls, the 50-50 possessions, how important they are. And South Dakota making him pay for those miscues. South Dakota State 7 of 10 from the line here in the first half. The heavy favorites in this game, we knew that, but the way Omaha had been playing here this weekend, we thought, well, maybe 
and give them a rub, but it hasn't materialized yet. And that's what tournament time is all about, right? You're looking for a team to make that run, for someone to get hot at the right time. Omaha absolutely did it in the first two rounds, but this is why what we're seeing here today, this is why the South Dakota State team has been so dominant this season in the Summit League. Stanley from three. This has been a cold shooting half for Omaha. Two of seven from outside the arc, five of 24 overall. Oh, and that got her in the face. Stanley accidentally hitting Paige Meyer. Didn't mean to, it was unintentional, but Meyer took it in the face. She's got to take these shots with a minute 12 to go. Well, this is an incredibly tough kid. You know, we, you said it earlier, Clay. This is, she went down with an ACL injury, missed the Summit League tournament last year. Probably one of the reasons why I think South Dakota State stumbled in this tournament and didn't get themselves into the NCAA last year. She wasn't 100% early, but got herself back to being what she needed to be to get back on the floor. Stanley, she'll go to the line. You can go a long way with that. They have proven that. There have been nights when Selen hasn't been on, or Haley Timmer hasn't shot the ball very well. Someone else has stepped up. Stanley's free throw, 40 seconds to go in the first half. 10 on the shot clock. Selen will drop it down inside for Tyson, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Callie Tyson. But they haven't been able to score to be able to get it set, and that's the difference maker right now. Stanley ahead of the buzzer, doesn't get it to go, and that's how the half comes to an end. What a good one for South Dakota State. 44-16 as the Jack shoot 65%. This team has held opponents to 60 or fewer points in 10 of their last 11 games. They are on track to do that again. The Quick biggest, steal. And I think the biggest part of that, Clay, is just really going to come by having some patience on both ends of the floor. This team, they can't get antsy here in this second 20 minutes, and they've got to stick to their philosophy, and you've got to stick to your discipline on the defensive end. Elena Pilakuta went just two points in the first half, gets a bucket there. She's coming off a couple of double-doubles the last two games, but she has been quiet in this one. Selen driving. And that is a tough matchup for anybody right now on this Omaha roster because of her size and her ability to get to the rim. Another foul shot coming. And led by as many as 30 at one point in the first half. And that's off the hands of Nikolajkina, another turnover for Omaha. Because they got good looks in the half court, but the struggle has been there because of how much space this Jackrabbit defense takes up. Burkhard left open for three, and she hits it. This is a friendly crowd of Jackrabbit fans. They are sitting and waiting for this team to be able to claim another Summit League Tournament Championship. Lina Pilakuta. On the point, dishes off, and that's a nice drive for Nikolajkina, who had those three, a uh, couple of threes early on in the first half that kept Oma hanging around in the first five minutes or so, but then she went quiet. And now that's going to be an offensive foul. You are hitting on all cylinders. We haven't seen that this afternoon from Omaha. In their two wins here in the quarterfinals and the semis, they were able to do that, put together much more complete games. Burkhardt just picked up her third foul, and now there's another one that goes, goes against South Dakota State. She had 18 points against North Dakota. Get them touches and just that penetration lane and opportunities. 48-22, third quarter. South Dakota State has shot a terrific percentage today. 70% from three, 67% from the field. Timmer tied up on the baseline. And this one's going to go to Omaha. You stand and you just watch and hope that something good happens. A regroup at halftime with Kerry Banks to have a conversation about getting back to the basics. Stanley, nice move and finish. And the blow by, which she was able to do early, couldn't get it to go and had shots blocked. That time, a wide open opportunity. By the way, Nelson just went to the bench moments ago with her th third foul. So you've got Burkhardt and Nelson each with three. He really likes his position in Brookings. You know, I think when you can build a culture and you can put together a program as Aaron Johnson has at South Dakota State, it goes a long way. And people understand that they respect those decisions. 
Timmer is still good off the dribble. Gets it back on the perimeter, and they find Gilton on the wing. She's the facilitator, but has a fantastic stroke when she can line it up and get her feet set from three. Driving Grant. Bad shot, tough shot. As the Jacks knocked her off balance. Here's Gilton again. What I don't understand with Omaha is you've got Pila Kuda, who's taken three shots today. She's made every shot. She's got six points, and she's one of their better players. Why aren't they setting her up more? Champ Week exclusive presentation. College basketball brought to you by principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. Under five minutes to go here in the third quarter, and at the line, Paige Nelson. Knocking down free throws. Here comes Grant. Pila Kuda hasn't missed a shot today. Three for three. That one's blocked by Tyson. To be able to feed their bigs inside. She gets that touch, but then it's all about the defense by the Jackrabbits. Another block this afternoon. That's seven now for South Dakota State. It's her first basket in the second half. After four minutes to go in the quarter. Tyson. On the wing, here's Timmer. She also has not missed a shot today, and as I say that, can't connect. Tyson, though, will get to the line. 55-28, Tyson at the line. Got them both. Kelly Tyson's just one of those quiet players, very workmanlike, but Omaha was able to do that. Today, their struggles have been mostly on this end of the floor, and that has just given too much freedom, too much flow to what South Dakota State wants to do also on the offensive end. Conscious misses. Two on one here for the Jackrabbits. Good pass. Burkhard, the finish. I tell you, Tori Nelson has had a complete game today. She's scoring, she's rebounding, she's facilitating. Cave spinning and gets that one to roll down. Grace Cave, who led the Mavericks with 19 in the semifinals yesterday, hasn't really gotten hot yet. If she does, that could change things in a hurry. And that opens up doors. You've got to be able to see if you can't get that penetration downhill one on one. They also have got to knock down some perimeter shots. Burkhardt out for Timmer for three. Yes, another one for South Dakota State. Mitchell can't get it to go. And there's Hallie Timmer again flying in from that weak side with a big defensive board. Pushing tempo and getting to the rim. She goes coast to coast. The sophomore's done a little bit of everything so far. You have it all figured out. Someone is going to absolutely blow your bracket up. It sure. doesn't matter. There'll be an upset. Something's going to happen. And you will have no idea. 64-32. Here we are in the fourth quarter. South Dakota State, the one seed. They didn't get beat during the regular season. Now trying to cap off a sweep through the tournament. There's another Paige Meyer basket. Anna Nikolachkina is on the floor now. Her sister, her twin sister, Polina, turns it over. And now here comes Paige Meyer. Step through the defense, and the sophomore shows off some really nice moves. We know that they are going to shut people down, but they did it even better than they normally do, only giving up eight points in those first two quarters. Four players in double figures for South Dakota State as Mathewitz is in the game now, and she will get to the foul line. We kind of saw this coming with those early upsets in this tournament. The number two seed, the number three seed, the number four seed all upset, and that kind of paved a nice, easy path for South Dakota State. It did give them, I think, much more clear tracks to be able to get themselves not only into this championship game, but then to be able to have it and to dominate it as they have this afternoon. But it was a lot of... Is coming with those early upsets in this tournament. The number two seed, the number three seed, the number four seed all upset. And that kind of paved a nice, easy path for South Dakota State. It did give them, I think, much more clear tracks to be able to get themselves not only into this championship game, but then to be able to have it and to dominate it as they have this afternoon. But it was a lot of interesting storylines throughout the week here in Sioux Falls. As you mentioned earlier, the Kansas City squad, which is seven available players getting to the semis. This Omaha squad, who wasn't in this tournament last year and picked last 
in the preseason poll of the Summit League, giving themselves a shot to maybe punch their ticket and go up against number one. But domination and really a team on a mission, that's what we've seen from the Jackrabbits. Keitch has hit a three for Omaha. The first points of the second half. And Sellen drives to the free throw line. Mathewitz another three-point attempt for the Jacks, and that swims in. Man, they don't miss from out there. The 5'10 freshman, she's from Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. She scored over 3,700 points in high school. So that is a shooter's mentality. Gets it back for Kaichis. Shot fake. Nikolachkina a little strong. That rebound plucked by Selland. Selland is... A workmanlike effort here today. I mean, it hasn't been flashy, but her, her line is going to be good when it's all said and done in double figures with points. Of these teams, who do you like? Well, I think it's really interesting. you got to look at teams that are trending on the way up. Everybody's winning. Gardner-Webb with one of the longest winning streaks in the country. Look at what Washington State, Cami Etheridge has done. They upset teams. They win a Pac-12 championship, tournament championship for the first time ever. Obviously, Caitlin Clark and a fantastic ambassador for women's basketball and what they've done at Iowa. I think they are going to beat some teams and be a very tough out for anyone who sees them in their region. I think you'd say the same thing about South Dakota State. A lot of teams do not want to see these Jackrabbits in a first-round matchup. Well, now it comes down to draw, right? And it's all going to be about the magic that happens within that selection committee conference room when they get together later this week. Selection Sunday coming up. And more big buckets by the sophomore Meyer. They continue to just dominate on both ends of the floor. And it is... All gas, no brakes right now for the Jackrabbits. Paige Meyer, who has never played in the postseason, never been a part of a Summit League title team, and she's just minutes away from holding that trophy with the rest of her teammates. What a year she has had. And I think you've also got to give credit. She's going to come out of the game right now, and as is Paige Burkhardt and Maya Sellen. And they get a huge ovation from this crowd, which is 95% blue and yellow. But that blue and gold right now, but I, I got to tip my cap to Drew Gilton, Clyde, because I think that's one player here as she's running the floor and taking care of the basketball right now. Was in that starting lineup, understood her role for this team, finding the right place out of that transfer portal to come home to her home state in South Dakota. And to be here with the Jackrabbits back at SDSU. And you got to be able to just understand what your role is for your team. She has done that and more. Tyson is fouled in a three-point opportunity for her. And even late in the game with a huge lead, there's no sacrifice for the Jackrabbits. It is execution on the out-of-bounds underneath. And now you've got Tyson with the chance at that three-point play. We've seen her make an impact on both ends of the floor this afternoon. She's done it all season long. And for this team, who can absolutely be one of the... 40-point lead for South Dakota State in the title game. There's a three rain down by Kaichis, her second of the half. Skip pass, Gilton to Boston, her first field goal attempt. The largest winning margin in a Summit League Women's Championship game, 23 points. That uh, appears to be ready to be blown out of the water. Nice move there. Nikolachkina is fouled. All reversal, movement, all of those things have been in sync this afternoon. All the star players are on the bench now for South Dakota State. Their work is done and what a day it's been they're ready to go to 35 and 5 all-time in summit league tournament play and pick up their 10th summit league championship as mathewitz drives in and these reserves are going to get a chance to you know, feel what it's like to play in a championship game here and get some experience for the future yeah it's a fantastic feeling for young players to know what it's like to be in this environment and that will go a long way it's one thing aaron johnson said about that run that his squad made a year ago. Omaha was able to establish their post player enough as Matthews hits another shot. They didn't give up that position where she could just 
thin people on that low block. They kept her off the offensive glass, which is where she also has made a living over the course of this season. They didn't give up those second chance opportunities. And South Dakota State just has had an answer for every single trip, whether it's been key players off their starting five or reserves that have come in. She decided to embrace that, and it is not easy to do. But because of that, you have seen her numbers grow and her success on the floor throughout the course of the time with Carrie Banks as a head coaching position. And you are going to see good things from this Omaha program in the future. All of the things that come with that, that's not going to be the case this afternoon for Omaha. But you got to give credit to the fact that they came to this tournament knowing that there was opportunity in front of them to keep their season going they had to win they did it twice they just didn't have the firepower this afternoon Townsend Jim Shai strong Smith second chance points there for the post player from Omaha You get the sense right now, Clay, now that we've gotten to just about a minute or under a minute to go, that this crowd, they're waiting. They're waiting for that opportunity to be able to not only celebrate what this team has done throughout the course of the regular season. 30 seconds to go. Cave floats it over Mathewitz. Backside rebound is cleared by Byam. And here comes the crowd. Shot clock is off. Only Colbeck will dribble this one out, and South Dakota State, for the first time since 2019, is going to be the seventh league tournament champion. No question whatsoever, this squad is in the NCAA tournament. They do not have to leave it up to fate. They sealed theirs here today. They get the win and a seventh league title.